So technically, if you really want to treat this condition, you have two options or rather I should say you have three options. One, you decrease the resorption. B, you increase the formation. C, you do the combo pack. All right, hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a very, very important topic with all of you and that is a topic which is an overlapping topic of a subject of orthopedics as well as pharmacology the topic is what is called as bisphosphonates well guys i'm sure most of you are already aware of this fact that bisphosphonate as a category of drug is not only the drug of choice for you know uh, uh, paget's disease but it is also the drug of choice for a condition called as osteoporosis now as far as paget's disease of the bone is concerned we do not see its clinical occurrence as commonly as what we see for this global heart burning topic osteoporosis now the purpose of this lecture is to teach you how these drugs are important when we are dealing with this condition called osteoporosis we need to first understand a bit about osteoporosis right now if anybody who is watching me listening to me is in 20s or 30s then probably this is the balance that you have right now. So on this side, you have osteoblastic bone formation, which is more as compared to osteoclastic bone resorption. That's why you're growing, your bones are growing. But with passage of age, let me just show you what is going to happen is, let's say, for example, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So with passage of age, I'm sure you must have appreciated by now that I have increased the osteoclastic resorption. Therefore, the weight got increased and it came here. But the osteoblastic bone formation is still the same. Many people have this concept that when we are talking about osteoporosis, it is due to excess resorption and poor bone formation. I would like to make this thing very clear to all of you today that osteoporosis means excess resorption, I agree, but along with normal bone formation. So technically, if you really want to treat this condition, you have two options or rather I should say you have three options. One, you decrease the resorption. B, you increase the formation. C, you do the combo pack. I hope I have made this clear. Either you decrease the resorption or you increase the formation or you do both of them together. So first of all, let's talk about that drug which is classically responsible for decreasing the resorption. Now when I say decreasing the resorption, that, what does that mean? That actually means that bisphosphonates by nature are called as anti-resorptive drugs. Now when I say that they are called as anti-resorptive drugs, we need to understand how. We need to understand how does that happen. So guys, please try to understand that there is a very important cell called as osteoclast, which I told you that the bone resorption is done by osteoclast. So if you have to cut down on the resorption part, one thing I'm sure you all will agree with me that you have to cut down on the activity of a cell called osteoclast. You have to cut down on you have to cut down on the activity of a cell called osteoclast. You have to cut down the activity of a cell. How does a cell work? Let's go back to our MBBS basic knowledge, even our twelfth grade knowledge. How does a cell work? First year MBBS back chemistry. I hope you remember there was something called as um, ATP. So what do you mean by ATP? ATP is the power of, of a cell. ATP is the energy supply of a cell. So if you cut down on the ATP supply of an osteoclast, don't you think that osteoclast will stop functioning? Yes, it will stop doing the resorption. Yes, when it will stop doing the resorption, will that be an anti-resorptive effect? Come on, tell me yes or no. Yes, how do, how do we understand that? How does it cut down the ATP? So guys, please understand that bisphosphonates, I'm using the short form BPs for them, they inhibit a very very important enzyme called as farnesyl pyro farnesyl pyrophosphate synthase now how does that enzyme help in help you in understanding this topic so my dear friends when bisphosphonates inhibit this enzyme how does that help this enzyme is a very very important enzyme in something which is called as cholesterol synthesis even to be more specific there is something called as mevalonate pathway of cholesterol synthesis so this mevalonate pathway of cholesterol synthesis is mediated with the help of this enzyme called as farnesyl pyrophosphate synthase so giving bisphosphonates will definitely inhibit this enzyme now when bisphosphonates will inhibit this enzyme due to inhibition of this enzyme thereby thereby leading to 
thereby leading to inhibition of thereby leading to inhibition of energy supply atp supply for osteoclastic bone resorption for atp supply for <coughs> osteoclastic activity osteoclastic bone resorption so far so good now there are many bisphosphonates that we use in our clinical market you know there are many names you might have heard pemidronate teludronate you know but i would like to mention here some of the few really important names that we use so one is called as risedronate believe me other one is called as ibendronate the third one is what we call as zolendronate so at least so this is ibendronate so the third one is what is called as zolendronate and now what is more important if you are listening to this what is more important for you it is used as a 35 mg tablet which has to given has to be given once a week this is 150 mg of tablet which has to be given once a month this is 5 mg intravenous injection which has to be given once a year so now this is the basic fundamental that i want you to understand now another fundamental that i want you to understand here is very important is this that there is a very common adverse drug reaction of bisphosphonate and that is basically reflux esophagitis which will definitely occur as a part of the gastroesophageal reflux disease something that i want to say and i would like to add that this is probably you know issued in public interest anybody who is consuming a tablet of bisphosphonate please understand one thing that you have to take it you have to take it how to take the medicine you should take the medicine first thing in the morning you should take the medicine the oral tablet first thing in the morning and when you are taking it first thing in the morning you can take it with maybe water maybe juice okay but then you have to make sure you are not supposed to lie down you are not supposed to sit down for next 45 minutes so for next 45 minutes you can either stand you can walk you can jog you can do anything but please don't lie down i'll tell you why because if you do that if you do that you will be able to prevent this side effect called as reflux esophagitis the second adr that i want to mention here is something which is called as osteonecrosis of jaw osteonecrosis of mandible it has been known to produce this complication also if consumed in excess dose and duration and now let me bring you to the most important aspect of this topic <clears throat> which cell are we inhibiting with the help of this drug osteoclast if by any chance by the virtue of the knowledge that you have from your basics you must be aware of the fact that osteoclast has a cell has to perform two functions both of them start with the alphabet r one is called as r for resorption the other one is called as r for remodeling what we are doing in elderly post menopausal women suffering from osteoporosis is that we are giving her bisphosphonate basically to inhibit the osteoclastic resorption but now comes the most important point that if that woman who is consuming bisphosphonate if not only osteoclastic resorption is inhibited what if remodeling is also inhibited guys when you must have heard me saying these doses some of you i'm sure must have had this question in your head that why the hell weekly monthly yearly normally any medicine that we eat is usually daily once a day twice a day thrice thrice a day od bd tds then why weekly why monthly why yearly listen to the statement a one decade study was done on these molecules called bisphosphonates and it was found out that when you will give these medicines in this particular dose schedule they will inhibit not only the osteoclastic resorption they will inhibit only the osteoclastic resorption without any effect on osteoclastic remodeling so after a long study it was found out that this dose given in this interval duration will inhibit only the r4 resorption without any effect on r4 remodeling and that is why this particular dosage was involved now what is our purpose see the purpose is to ensure that we are just inhibiting the resorption without any effect on remodeling but people you know patients sometimes they go over the board and what they did i'll tell you they had excess consumption people had believe me excess consumption of bisphosphonates 
they consumed bisphosphonates left right and center either in excess dose or in excess duration somebody let's say for example was prescribed bisphosphonates for six months they kept on taking for two years somebody was prescribed in a weekly dose they started taking it daily so when they started consuming bisphosphonates in excess dose and duration people noticed something that it resulted not only in the inhibition of osteo plastic resorption but it also resulted in the inhibition of osteoclastic remodeling now when both resorption and remodeling were gone the bone actually developed a new side effect the bone developed a new side effect of bisphosphonates and that was what was called as abs full form a dynamic bone syndrome now some of you might be wondering again what the hell is this bone is a very dynamic tissue bone is like a factory where at one point of time formation is happening along with the resorption modeling is happening along with remodeling if you are giving bisphosphonates in excess dose or duration if a person is consuming that will inhibit not only r for resorption but remodeling as well so formation will happen without resorption modeling will happen without remodeling and dynamicity, dynamicity will be gone how is that patient going to get to know whether the patient has developed a dynamic bone syndrome or not let me tell you clinically patient will develop a very vague kind of a hip pain clinically patient will develop a very weird kind of a, a very vague kind of a hip pain and when x-rays were done they will develop a atypical femur fracture they will develop a typical femur fracture and it is at that point of time that the people will get to know that yes they are they have complicated themselves by consuming bisphosphonates so i hope everyone that you have probably understood the very important topic of orthopedic pharmacology not only important for ug pg aspirants and pgs and orthopedics but also for the general public that this drug bisphosphonate is very important for two condition but primarily we use in osteoporosis this is how we use it these are the drugs which we use these are the side effects and these are the side effects due to excess consumption Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more and please like, share and subscribe the channel. And uh, uh, if you want more amazing content, thank you so much.